might use it for something now in the future, how we're going to use this thing that we're building. Them. And it's all to do with cost, of course, and everything's to do with cost, isn't it? We need to make sure that it doesn't cost a lot, and even if it doesn't cost us a lot now, will it cost us a lot in the future? So all together, I want you to remember this little picture. It's all to do with um, caring for your world now and, and for the future. So does everyone now understand what the word sustainable means? Yeah, we're going to keep going over that during the lesson. Um, those three words I want you to remember, environment, community, and cost. Has everybody got those? Okay, cool. We'll move on. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to think about what civil engineers do. Okay, now does anybody recognise this bridge? Can anybody tell me where it is? Yeah? That's the Falls Rail Bridge. Yeah, exactly, spot on. So that's the Falls Rail Bridge in Edinburgh. Okay, now, how does that bridge get there? What do you need to do to get a bridge? Yeah? Build it. Yeah, build it, exactly. But before we build it, so that's the job of a civil engineer. Before we build it, does anybody know what we might do? Yeah? Design it. Design it, exactly, spot on. So you, a civil engineer designs, he builds, and then do you think there's, well, there's one more stage that a civil engineer is involved in once the bridge is there? Does anybody know? Yeah? Um, sustaining. Yeah, so sustaining it, maintaining it. And we call that main maintain. And now with this bridge, have you, when you drive, when you go past it, when you're on the fourth road bridge next to it, you'll always see there's often people painting the bridge. And that's because when they start painting it at one end, it takes the whole year to get to that other end, and as soon as they get there, they have to start painting all again. And that's to stop it getting rusty, and to stop, to keep it as safe. And that's something that we need to think about when we're thinking about sustainability. So a civil engineer should have thought about sustainability when he built it, and that's a big extra cost, isn't it? Okay, so we know that civil engineers build bridges, yeah? So does anyone want to have another guess at what we might, what other thing we might build? Houses? Yeah, yeah. Actually buildings, so not just houses, lots of different buildings, yeah. Um, developments, yeah, development houses, and is there any, anyone along here want to have a go? Lots of different things. Now, a clue is that anything a civil engineer will build stays still, <coughs> and you pretty much will probably use a lot of them nearly Every day. Can we go? Stadiums. Stadiums? Yes. Yeah? Big buildings? How about, what did you, if you came in a car today, what did you drive along in your car? A road. A road, yeah. Do you want to have any other ideas about different transport? Do you want to have a go? How'd you get, yeah? Air, yeah, the airports, we build the airport, yeah? Trains. Trains, railways. So it's not the actual thing that's moving, it's the, where, what, the, the thing that moves goes along. Yeah? How about you? Yeah, exactly. There's lots. I want to think about um, about water. Yeah. Yeah, ports. Yeah, big. You know, big boats. Um, but water, you um, turn on your tap, don't you? Where does that water come from? That's clean. Yeah. Well, yeah, reservoirs. So it's all about us getting water, clean water to drink. The pipes that we bring them, we clean the water, bring it to you so you can drink it. Take it away to sewage works. Yeah. So there's lots of different things. We'll go through. I've got some pictures. Got buildings. Now, does anyone recognise this building? Yeah. Well, not South Africa, Beijing. But you've got the right mm -hmm. name, so you're there. So that's a Sanazi example of what we could design. Yeah. So we've got bridges, like we said. Damn, we didn't mention this one. But you know, when you touched on reservoirs, what keeps the reservoir there is a dam at one end. It's a really complicated road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An example of a road. Yeah. Airports, like I said. Knowing. There's lots of things. Does everyone now understand how important civil engineers are? Because how often do you use all these things? Obviously not down, but like railways, airports, go on holiday, roads to get to school, buildings to, to come to school because your school's a building, isn't it? Yeah? So that's quite exciting. And we need these things all over the world, don't we? Because in Australia they're going to need buildings, they're going to need railways, they're going to need water. Yeah? Now we're not going to talk about these things today, we're going to talk about the next thing which is water supplies, which I touched on, didn't I? So we turn on our tap, nice clean water comes out, we drink it, we don't even think about where it comes from, we're really privileged, aren't we? But what we're going to talk about today is people that are not as privileged. In developing countries, yeah? Like Africa, South America, some places in Asia, where they, don't, they can't just turn on a tap and nice fresh water come out. Now when you go to the toilet, you flush the toilet, or takes it away, doesn't even think about it. Goes to a sewage works, it gets dealt with. Um, so we, we don't think about these things, do we? Now, this is 
this is a bit fun. Why have some pictures like this before? And some look in the bottom. Who's he? Got the yellow there. Yeah. From charity. Yeah. So who is this little guy? Children in need. Yeah. So children in need and other types of charities raise a lot of money for things like this so that we can get these people that don't have these things that we take for granted, like water supplies. Um, around the world, so we raise lots of money for them. And that's what we're going to talk about today, designing them as civil engineers for water supply. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so what do we need water for? What do you use water for every day? Yeah? Drinking. Drinking, yeah. Cooking. Cooking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cleaning, <coughs> yeah. Washing. Washing, yeah. Drying. Dry, yeah. Any others? Okay, so they're what you use it for every day. But now, if you lived in a developing country like Kelly was talking about, now, a lot of people in developing countries live off the land. So that means they have crops, they, they grow plants, and they also have animals, and that's how they earn money. So if, you, if that was your way of life, what else would you need water for? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we have the drinking, the cooking, washing, feeding animals, and growing crops. So they're all very important things, okay? And in developing countries, it's especially important because that, that's how they're going to make their livelihoods. Okay, so now, does everybody here have a toilet in their house? Yeah? Okay, sounds like a silly question. Does anybody have two toilets in their house? Yeah? Quite a few people. No. This is, you've got three? Wow, wow. You're very lucky because... Okay, well... 2.5 billion people in the world have no access to a toilet of any kind. So that's not even a toilet outside, a toilet they share with their neighbours, they have no toilet whatsoever. And does anybody here have a mobile phone? So, does anybody's parents have mobile phones? Yeah? So there's a lot of people with mobile phones. But at the same number, there's 2.5 billion people without a toilet. It's the same number of mobile phones in use. So that's something to think about, isn't it? We're very lucky here. So we need, as a civil engineer, we need to help. Will you help us today? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to introduce you to the Matumba family. Now, they are just a fictional family. They are not real. Although Kat has met a family called the Matumbas when she was mm -hmm. in Zambia. But you'll see, when you go back to your models, there are the Matumbas live in the village that you have in your model. Now, this is just a model. So obviously it's made out of cardboard and the houses are made out of paper. But in reality, obviously, people's houses are not made out of paper. Just in one. So the Matumbu are um, a typical um, African family. They live in, we'll say, Zambia, yeah, in Africa. They're very poor, and they live in a very remote village. And they have no safe access to any drinking water or a place that goes to the toilet. So we are going to talk about today, as civil engineers, what we would do to give them these two vital things that we take so for granted. A water supply and someone to go to the toilet. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so we need them water and some sanitation. Now we'll talk about sanitation in a minute. But we um, to help them, as civil engineers, to get them water. We've talked about this before, what do we need to give them? Um, a pump. A pump. Exactly. So we've got a, a lady with a well on the pump here. Now sanitation, does anyone want to have a go at what sanitation means? Yeah. Going to the toilet. Yeah, going to the toilet. Keeping clean, that is all to do with that. Keeping our waste in, in one place so it's nice and safe, we don't have to, it doesn't get spread around. But keeping clean and not letting <coughs> disease spread around, that's what it's all about. And for that, we would have a toilet, but um, in developing countries they have what is called a latrine. Does anyone want to have a go at what a latrine is? Yeah. It's a hole in the ground. It is, it's a hole in the ground. And there's one big difference between a toilet and a latrine, which I want you to remember. In the latrine is just a hole in the ground. There's no pipes taking any of that waste anywhere. It's just a hole in the ground. So that's the main difference. There's no pipes. Yeah? So does everyone understand how civil engineers are now going to get from the tumbos some safe water and some sanitary conditions? Yeah? Well and pump and a latrine. Does that make sense to everybody? <coughs> yeah? Okay. Okay, now, so first off, we're going to, as civil engineers, we're going to design this latrine that we're going to give to the tumbos. First off, we need to think about how much waste is going into the latrine every day. Now, so here's our Matumba family, and each family ma member makes one litre of waste a day. So if we go back into our groups, if you guys get up, let's go back into your groups. Now, Tom's, that's 
another litre of water gone into our latrine. Okay, and somebody from the back? Here we have Mommy Matumba. <laughs> So every time somebody goes to the toilet, that's one litre going into the, every day, one litre going into this latrine, okay? Now somebody from the back group? Anybody? Somebody? Somebody in the corner group? Anyone? You in? Somebody grab the... Yeah. East. Okay. So this is the daughter, the oldest daughter. <laughs> Sorry. It's my sick tape. Okay, yeah, and if you come to us, you everybody got some water from each pump? Yeah, okay, well, the detention at the front. Okay, stop pumping. You boys have got tons of water. Okay, stop the pumping. Okay, now. Design, what was the other one? Building. We have bridges as our example to begin with. What other projects did we have? Anybody written anything down there? Sorry? Roads, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah? Dam busting. Dam building, yeah, no busting. Yeah? Sorry? Yeah, so the latrines. Okay, so there's lots of jobs that the civil engineers do. Now, somebody read me out the second question. Can you read it out for me? Okay, so what was the latrine? Anybody know? Yep. Hold them to the ground to do the toilet. What was that one thing? What makes it different from a... You cannot flush it. You can't flush it. There's no pipes. Okay.